Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'd like to welcome you to another stream of the New Home Missionary Baptist Church. I don't know if you know this, amen, but God has placed something in my spirit on today. And what he's placed in my spirit is to let you know that he has a blessing with your name on it. So if you are out there today and you are ready to worship, amen, that means that you're ready to receive. We want to thank you for joining us once again today, amen, whether you're on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or our website. And in particular for new home members, on today we want to we'll let you know that at 1 o'clock we will be launching the Right Now media campaign. So, amen, be ready uh, after 1, check your inboxes, and you should be able to go ahead and set up your right now media account. Amen. But getting down to business, I don't know about you, but I came to give God some praise on today because he is deserving. The last time that I checked, amen, he owned it. Uh, all the cattle on the thousand hills, amen. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Amen. We're going to ask that you please bow your head with us as we go to him, amen. Petition the throne of grace. Most gracious and everlasting Father, we come today saying thank you. Master, we come, God, acknowledging the fact of who you are. You are a holy God. God, you are perfect in all your ways. And God, it's because of that, Master, uh, we want to lift you up. We want to praise you. We want to worship you. Father, when we think about all the things that you have done for us, God, our souls, it just truly cries out, Master, for truly you have been good. And God, on today, Master, there's someone, and perhaps that needs you today. There's someone, God, that needs a touch from you today. Father, you told us where the Spirit of the Lord is that there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. So God, we ask in the name of Jesus, oh, today, God, you would allow the Holy Spirit to be the order of the order of today. God, we thank you in advance for the preacher, Master, on today. We ask that you touch him right now, God. Just allow him, God, to speak the utterances of heaven. God, we thank you, Master, in advance for what's going to take place in this day. Father, there's something in my spirit that declares, Master, that some change will be broken, God. Some minds will be re-regulated. Someone will be set free. And Master, someone may even ask, what must I do to be saved? So God, we humble ourselves on today and we say, have your way. Master, have your way. God, in everything that we do today, have your way. And it's in the precious name of Jesus. I do pray. Amen. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum. And you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're going to look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Good morning, church. In honor of Black 
History Month, the song that we are getting ready to sing is called, We Are Marching in the Light of God. We, we is a word of community, the community of the living, of the living, and the community of the living dead. Marching, marching is an action that unifies the community as they move physically and spiritually in the same direction. We are marching in the light of God. Marching in the light of God is a meaning, has a meaning on several levels. While it is a symbol of the creation of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. I will also be singing this song in the Zulu language. I hope you like it. See? 
someone out there shout out hallelujah, amen, praise be to God. We thank uh, the praise team on today for um, just lighting our souls on fire. Uh, but let me just suggest to you that, amen, as anointed as the praise team was, the best is yet to come. Amen. On today, we uh, have a uh, special speaker. Amen. And um, I want to take a moment to uh, introduce this brother, this, uh, uh, this fine gentleman. Amen. Um, Reverend Nelson. <clears throat> excuse me. It's Reverend Nelson. Amen. Of uh, the Macedonia Church. Amen. He is an awesome brother, a great friend of mine, and I'm just so delighted to have him today, amen, because one of the things that I know is going to take place is he is going to um, speak a word, amen, and I don't know about you, but I am ready for a word on today, and just let me say um, about this brother, I have come to love him, amen, um, with all my heart, he is definitely, um, when I look at his gifts, when I look at um, who he is. He is a blessing for the kingdom of God. So all of you out there today, amen, I want you to get your hearts ready, amen, we want you to lift your hands up in the air, amen, um, and say a prayer as he come, amen. Uh, none other than Reverend Nelson, Reverend Brooklyn Nelson. Come on up, brother. I want to say thank God for another day of worship. Sir. To my friend and brother, Pastor Robertson, we thank God for him extending the invitation for me to practice one more time here at New Home. Amen. Thank God for him. Uh, he feels the same way that I feel about him. He is a friend and a brother. I don't mean, we don't have to talk every day, but when we do talk, we enjoy each other. And we thank God for the friendship and the relationship. To you, New Home, it is good to be with you one more time. Uh, we thank God for uh, the blessing of being able to share. Even in pandemic times, God is still good and he is worthy to be praised. So uh, do yourself a favor and those who watch it, uh, put some hearts and emojis in the comment section that you're ready to praise the Lord. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I ask that everybody bow their heads. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word. We pray now that you will bless your people. Lord, we know that you are a God like none other. Yes, Master. God, we thank you that you have chosen us to be your children. Yes, Lord. And Lord, even though sometimes we don't act like we're supposed to act, talk like we're supposed to talk, uh, live like we're supposed to live, you have not kicked us out of the family. Yes. So for that, Lord, we're thankful and we bless your name. Now, Lord, we pray that as we prepare to share the word, that you would bless the hearts and minds of the people. Yes. Lord, that the word might be fulfilling, it might be strengthening, it yes. might deliver, it might set free. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. 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 From the book 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 7 through 9, we want to share with you a familiar passage of Scripture, and hopefully you have the Bibles close by, you at the house. Amen. If you don't have the Bible, go ahead and get your electronic device and want you to keep it, your Bibles and phones and tablets open so that you see the word and you know that I'm not making none of this stuff up. Yes, Amen. Paul records here in verse 7, and lest I should be exalted above measure, by the abundance of the revelation, the thorn in the flesh was given to me, uh -huh. a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Uh -huh. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, 
for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities uh -huh. that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For a few moments this morning, we want you to take this subject and hang it on the clothesline of your mind and let the Holy Ghost glow in it. We're going to talk about living with a handicap. Mm. Living with a handicap. Right. One of the things as believers, we say as we walk this journey with the Lord, that our God is a problem solver. Uh -huh. And that's true. And we might even say that he has the solution to all of our problems. That's also true. These statements are accepted by all Christians without question. Uh -huh. I believe I can say without fear or contradiction that we all at some point have uh, accused God of not hearing our prayers just because he didn't come when we wanted him to all come. Right. Uh, he didn't take away some condition or some circumstance that we felt uh, was uh, we needed to get rid of. Uh, as a person, a uh, person can be unemployed, financially strapped, and praying for a job. You know, more month than you have money. Uh huh. You, you what I call whole broke. What is whole broke? Yes, yeah, good question. Whole broke is when you don't even have money in your pocket. Somebody ought to say amen. You've been there before. Amen. Meaning that you, you, you're struggling, uh, as we say sometimes, in between blessings. Uh -huh. Sometimes a person is ill and prays for healing. Uh, sometimes a person who is plagued with a problem of loneliness, they pray for a uh, sister might pray for a husband, a brother might pray for a wife. Uh, sometimes those who pray for uh, uh, a spouse find themselves, uh, they set a limit All right. or time frame on God. Uh -huh. uh, you know, we want to give God two weeks uh, to answer our prayer, and he didn't answer our prayer precisely and concisely like we think he ought to. There's a problem on the line. Right, Amen. We wonder what went wrong. But we must always keep in mind that although God always hears and answers sincere prayers uh -huh. of his children, he does not always say yes. yes, sir. yes sir. Sometimes he says yes, uh -huh. but not now. Sometimes he says yes, but wait a while. Uh -huh. Sometimes he says yes, but you're not ready. Uh -huh. Somebody always help me. Yeah, you've been there before. Not all of these answers are easy to accept because they keep us in a state of anticipation and expectation. Uh -huh. Even though the solution to our problems has not come, we can have the assurance that God uh, has for us is for us. And what he does, he works it out in his own time. Uh -huh. But another answer which is more difficult to accept sometimes, God just says flat out no. But when God says no to a Christian, uh -huh. the word has uh, a built-in clause which says, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. And when we think about how God, good God has been to us, we have to accept what he says. Now, with you. I, I, I hear you already. You're, you're looking at the screen, you're looking at me, and I'm virtually looking at you. God works it out so that we have what we need to have, not always what we want to have. So, so whether you realize it or not, your problem uh, uh, is, that you encounter and God's saying no is really a blessing sometimes. Because right. it prevents you from getting arrogant. It prevents you, my brothers and my sisters, ladies and gentlemen, from getting stuck up. You know, your nose is so far in the air, you're about to get a nosebleed. Yeah, yeah, problems will keep you humble and help you to keep your head out of the clouds. I'm, 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 I'm not going to take the, the, the problem away, God says, but I'm going to give you my grace and you'll find out as time goes on, my grace is 
sufficient to help you live with your problem. Well, uh, I titled this uh, this sermon today, Living with a Handicap. And I would, I would say to you that as, as you look at what's going on, the first thing I want to tell you is that you need to live with your handicap. Uh -huh. Well, uh, look at the scripture. It says in verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure, by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, uh -huh. a messenger of Satan to buffer me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Paul says that his storm was given to him to prevent him from getting carried away with his own glory. Uh -huh. In other words, he says, lest I should be exalted above measure. You see, uh, if ever there was a man who had something to write about, on, it was Paul. Come on, sir. Uh, in addition to being fluent in 13, one, three different languages, he was a great scholar, a dynamic preacher, and a noted church organizer. Uh -huh. He was a skillful tent maker. He was a proud Pharisee. He was a devoted Jew. And watch this now. He was a free Roman citizen. He also had more than ample uh, 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 his ample share of spiritual revelations. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says he was taken up into a place which uh, he described as the third heaven. Uh -huh. And while he was there, he heard uh, some stuff, some things he had never heard before. He got some information that he didn't have and was not uh, given the ability to release the information that he got. He reached a certain level of understanding which was beyond what anybody else had received. So, uh, you know, sometimes uh, God gives you stuff you can't tell nobody. My goodness. My goodness. Some of the... Uh, <laughs> Some of our problems sometimes, watch me now, um, let me say it like this, we get diarrhea in the mouth. We just want to tell everybody everything. But some things God has intended for you to keep to yourself. Paul had a whole lot going on, and if anyone had a right to brag, it would have been him, it was Paul. So uh, to de decrease the possibility of his bragging, God inflicted him with the thorn in his flesh. Break it down, brother. My God. Paul doesn't give us a clue as to the nature of his thorn. Uh -huh. Many theologians have speculated that it, what it may have been, some say it was a physical thorn, some say it was a, a, a memory of something he had did before he got saved. Uh, I don't know what it was, but he didn't tell us, and it ain't in the scripture, but we know that he said he had a thorn. Yes, sir. Uh, this is what Paul found out about when he spoke to him, uh, spoke to God about his thorn. Uh, 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 our thorns are not new, watch this, to God. My goodness. My goodness. They are new to us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. God is omniscient. He knows before we were even born that we were going to have a thorn. He knew what it would be. Let me say if I can see if I can put it this way, you can reach it. Uh, we all have a pre-existing condition called sin. Uh, ain't no use of you acting like you ain't never done nothing wrong. You can take that crap halo off your head. The Bible says all have sinned uh -huh. and come short of the glory of God. We don't all have the same sin. In other words, we do have this in common. We all have a handicap. And as we begin to conform to the likeness of Christ, the more our handicap, watch this, gets on our nerves. I don't know about you. I don't, I, I, my sister, my brother, I don't know about you. I'm just, I know about me. Uh, closer I get to the Lord, uh -huh. 
the more ticked off I get with myself when I mess up. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. And closer you get to you, 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 you're not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but you are transformed by the renewing of your mind, and you start uh, more walking like the Lord wants you to walk. Uh -huh. You start living like more like the world that the Lord wants you to live. You get ticked off when you fall for the trick of the devil. Yes, you know, uh, uh, you fall for the okey uh, uh Malcolm X said, uh, uh, you, uh, you've been bamboozled, been run amok, and you've been led astray. Well, because the problem is we have yielded to temptation. Uh -huh. We have yielded to temptation. Well, what do you mean? Well, uh, the devil knows just how to hit you because he's the master of hitting below the belt. He knows what you like. And the only way to resist him uh, uh, having influence with the temptation he sends your way is you got to not rely on your strength, but you got to rely on the strength of God. Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. Uh, uh, number two, Number two, uh, when you're living with a handicap, you have to learn with your handicap. It's right there in the text. I'm not making it up. It says, verse 8 says, concerning this thing, I have pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Uh -huh. Without Paul's thorn, he thought that he, 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 he could be a better Christian without the thorn. So he took uh, the matter up to God in prayer. After the first uh, uh, time, he, he waited for an answer, but no answer came. Uh -huh. This caused him to pray a second time. After his second prayer, he waited once again, but no answer came. This caused him to go to God a third time. Uh, uh, and there, Paul didn't give up. He called on God. And I must pause because the lesson here is don't stop praying. Say it again. Don't stop praying. God knows you have an issue and he knows that you got some repeated questions. But here's the thing that I'm going to share with you in case somebody don't know. Uh, you can't wear God out talking to him about the same thing. Keep on praying because God knows uh, it's, it's not so much, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with him, but it has everything to do with you. And God knows just what to do in all of our situations. Paul prayed three times. And it's, the text shows us, uh, we know from the text, that God knows what he's doing. You don't have to worry because you're going to be okay because watch this, you are a king's kid. In other words, uh, God damn right. What you have to remember is God's love is so encompassing that he loves us many times in spite of us. And when he loves us on the level that he loves us, he will always be available to us. Uh, Pastor, Pastor, you know what? I, I, this, this is something I thought about uh, some time ago, uh, but it, it fits right here, that we have an advocate, mm -hmm. which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We also have the Holy Ghost, which is on the inside of us. Uh -huh. Even in those times when we cannot utter the words, the Holy Ghost takes our groaning and our moaning to the Lord. And the Lord uh, turns around and as he sits on the right hand of God, now watch this, I gotta give this one for free. The right hand of God, that is the power side of God. So, so his son sits on the power side. So he tells God what our problem is, and God takes care of our problem. Okay, let me let 
me let me me give another one free. This this gonna help somebody uh, because it is Jesus who is our elder brother who is sitting on the right hand of God. Nothing that Jesus asks God for, God says no to. You ought to be running in your house right about that. Let me say it again. Nothing that Jesus asks God, God does not turn around and tell Jesus no, because God knows that this is his son. And watch this. The Holy Spirit, Jesus, a God, all work the Trinity, all work for our good. So you need to keep your faith in God that he's going to work it out for you. Watch this now. After waiting an extended period of time, the answer came. No doubt when Paul received this answer, he thought it was going to come about another way. I would say Paul was both happy and excited. Excited because he thought God was going to take away his thorn. Uh -huh. But lo and behold, when God spoke, he had an answer which was totally different than what Paul was expecting. You ever prayed to God and the answer was not what you expected? Uh huh, uh huh. He was, uh, whatever took place, Paul discovered he's that, 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 that what has happened to him was for him. Just when you thought God was going to answer your request, you remember what Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, uh -huh. but by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. He did, but what ended up happening, Paul did not get what he expected. In essence, God said, Paul, I have an answer for you. I have an answer for your problem. But the solution does not mean I'm taking away your problem. Because I gave you the problem to keep you grounded, to make sure you maintained good footing. Sometimes God doesn't tell you yes because he's trying to keep you on stable and not shaky ground. I, I gave it to you to discipline you and to keep you from getting the big head. You didn't need surgery. You just needed a sedative. You didn't need an operation. You just needed a tranquilizer. You didn't need a, you didn't need a knife. You just needed the needle uh, for your problem to remind you that you cannot make it by yourself. Uh -huh. I'm going to leave you with your problem. This is my last point, and I'm through. Uh, when you're living with a can handicap, uh, third thing is you're loved with your handicap. Verse 9 says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. On the surface, it may seem like God is a cold piece of work. God knows what we need. I'm learning to be happy about everything that God has given to me, even some of the things that I didn't want. Because a lesson has been tied to that. Uh, I don't want many things. I have realized uh, that the blessings that God has given gives us room for growth. Yes, sir. He tells Paul, I'm going to give you something which will help keep you to live the life that I want you to live. Ah, your problem is going to stay with you. Mm. But I'm going to take care of you and your problem. Have mercy. What I'm going to give you will help you resist temptation. It will help give you uh, strength in the time of storm. Yes, sir. When uh, you look and find that if you're in a midnight situation, you're not in the midnight situation by yourself. I got something for you. If you have to give it a name, let's call it grace. Yes, Paul, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. It's sufficient, yes, Lord, uh, when men abuse you. My grace 
is sufficient. When so-called friends misuse you, yes, sir. my grace is sufficient. When enemies falsely accuse you, my grace uh -huh, is sufficient. When loved ones leave you, it's sufficient uh -huh, when you are criticized. It's sufficient when you are ostracized. It is sufficient when you are brutal, uh, uh, brutalized. It's sufficient when the devil is on your trail. Lord, whatever your problem is, don't worry about it. Uh, just keep a good supply of my grace. And you'll be able to live. God's grace is sufficient. No wonder John Newton called it amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Can I tell you a few more things about grace? God's grace is generous. That is nothing limited about it. God's grace is guaranteed. There's nothing unsure about it. God's grace is great. There's nothing insignificant about it. God's grace is gospel. There's nothing deceiving about it. I just want to tell you about God's grace. His grace has brought us from a mighty long way. Can I get a witness in here? You are a type. They are in the comment section that his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. His grace, it is sufficient. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you might be in the valley, but hold on to God's grace. You might find that the winds are blowing. The lightning is flashing. You don't know what to do, but hold on. Hold on. He got up with all power 
and heaven and earth in his hand, living with a handicap. It's all right to be handicapped when you have the Lord on your side. Life has many adventures. Life has many obstacles. Life has many unplanned, unexpected things that take place. But for the person who has Jesus, Jesus will not only order your steps, you will find that his grace is sufficient. But let me tell you something. David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. That's God in the rear. When you turn around and you think about goodness and mercy shall follow me, you also have God in front of you because he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Now, if you're looking, you're here with us today, and you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, I give you a special invitation. Come on to Jesus. Big Mama said, while the blood is one and warm in the veins, come on to Jesus while you have time. Now, I'm going to be honest, and you're not gonna, it's not going to be easy all the time. You're going to do some messing up because even though you say it don't mean that you're, you're protected from mess ups. But think about it, the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9 that if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When God cleanses you, you can rest assured that all of your sins have been forgiven. Now, Romans 10, 9 says, if thou wilt confess with Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Not, you might be saved. Not, maybe you're saved. Not, you could be saved. Not, you're going to be saved today, you mess up, you lose your salvation. No, 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 no. Don't work like that. I don't want a God that saved me and can't keep me. He will keep you. He will keep you. Now, also, if you already say there are those who right now we're in a situation where yeah the pandemic is going on but that does not prevent you from joining new home you can join new home virtually and i'm quite sure my friend and brother pastor robson along with the, the members of this church will receive you with open arms but you need to have a church home You've been struggling, and you've been saying, I'm going to go back to church, I'm going to go, did the pandemic hit, bam! But because the doors of the building are closed to members, does not mean that the church is closed to members. You can still join today. Make a decision. Make a decision. My brother, my sister, ladies and gentlemen, make a decision. If you don't have the Lord, get the Lord. And if you're not in fellowship with the Lord through the church and having a pastor who will be your soul watcher, come on today. Come on today. While you can, it'll be the best decision that you made in your life. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
Amen. Somebody out there type in hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Bless and praise be to God on today. Uh, we thank him for such uh, giving Reverend Nelson a powerful word. Amen. And one of the things that I noticed in uh, his um, uh, uh, rendering of what God has given him, he's right in tune with uh, the messages that has been preached for the last several weeks. Amen. Today's message living with a handicap. Amen. We thank God so much for you, uh, Reverend Nelson. Thank you for sharing with us. Amen. I was blessed on today, and I'm sure all of you out there were blessed. Amen. Um, if you were blessed on today, amen, do something in that, that Facebook. Uh, let us know that you were blessed. Amen. Um, I thank God um, for his uh, wisdom. Um, he knows everything. Uh, and all today he know that there's someone out there, matter of fact, all of us need to hear a word, amen, every day, but it's a blessing when you can get a word like that on a Sunday, amen. Um, we ask, amen, that you would just, uh, on today, um, just continue to give him praise, give him thanks, amen. Um, I have a couple of um, uh, uh, things that I would like to say, um, but uh, when don't forget, do not um, tune out after the benediction because we do have some um, uh, some announcements and PowerPoints. But a couple of things that um, I would like to acknowledge on today. Uh, number one, um, today is the last day of acknowledging Black History Month. Amen. Um, but what I want to say to you all, amen, just because it's a month, amen, we should not stop acknowledging um, all that has been done for us um, from the pioneers that came before us, this would be something that we do every day. Amen. Um, also, at 1 o'clock today, um, we have a right now media launch. Um, so we want you to be ready at 1 o'clock. All of you out there, check your inboxes. Um, it should have some information um, to ask to where you can set up the right now media. Um, also, um, a couple of uh, things to look forward to in the future. Um, uh, March 19th and March 21st, uh, we will be having with us, amen, the guest speaker, none other than the evangelist, Dr. Manuel Scott um, Jr. Um, on Friday night, uh, March 19th at 7 p.m., he will be teaching from his latest lecture, Vital Lessons from the Virus, What God is Saying to Us Through COVID-19. Um, then on Sunday, he will be uh, preaching the regular service uh, at 11 a.m. Amen. And once again, we thank God on today um, for Reverend Nelson. We, um, I was truly blessed. My soul um, set on fire. Um, and with that being said, we're going to have him to come up Amen. And give us a benediction. Amen. To Pastor Robson and to New Home, we thank God for the presence. Um, before I give you the benediction, I want to uh, remind you that um, Black History Month is more than the month of February. Black history is every month. And uh, I'm going to do my little plug. Uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, sure enough, uh, God made us unique. And just imagine if we were not in the world, how boring and how dead this world would be. So you do matter. You do matter. And let's lift up our country, let's lift up each other, and let's start uh, continuing to show love toward each other. Let's, uh, I don't know no other way to say it, but let's uh, keep our mouth off of each other unless it is in love. Amen. 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 So uh, I want to ask that you would bow your heads. 
Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. We thank you for being our God. And Jesus, we thank you for being our Savior. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his throne of glory. To only wise God, our Savior, may he be in glory and majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you.